What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage. Uh, we fixed up Grayson a Econ Rover a while back and we used a Go Power Sports Tilson 212 on it. We put Go Power Sports uh, reverse gearbox which has been working amazing. If you have a small block and you want reverse, check out the links in the video description for Go Power Sports reverse kits. They handle a ton of power with the small blocks. You can use them with a big block. Go Power Sports doesn't recommend it. But you can use them with like a stock big block but once you start doing performance parts they will not last but we fixed up this eton rover for uh, my son grayson and it used to have a 110 cc engine so we did that engine swap we put a cvt on it and uh, live axle build a new swing arm and he's been enjoying it well it set out in the rain a little bit he wouldn't park in it back in the the shed that he's supposed to and the brakes seized up and this happened before we ever worked on it and i thought it was a seized up master cylinder but what it is is the pedal mechanism is freezing up so we're going to pull that thing in the shop today we're going to get it fixed so he can enjoy it again and uh and yeah we'll just do a once over on it make sure everything's good and uh, let him go ripping on it again so let's get right into it so we got it pulled in got the hood pulled off and that battery pulled out these batteries are absolute crap on uh failing we've had so many of these over the years fail this one's super low it looks like of the the acid that's in it so i don't know if we can top that off with distilled water some of the channels like this one looks like it's real low but either way we're gonna try to uh, get that charge back up to her former glory and the only thing i don't like about how i put all these electronics in the dash or in the hood area is you have to literally unhook every single one of them to get this front body panel off now you shouldn't have to be pulling this thing off that often so it's not a massive problem but this is the problem that we're dealing with the brake pedal if we push it it stays down now the brakes are locked it will not return this is the same thing it was doing before so i don't know what the issue is i don't think i can get to the master cylinder any other way um it's tucked in there pretty well so that's the only downside about this little hood area i wish i would have made the hood area like cut out most of this plastic so you could access things like that and put the wiring somewhere else but it is what it is so we just got a bunch of phillips head screws all the way around this body gotta unhook the headlights and then i'm gonna try to not unhook that and just set it aside for now because hopefully this is a quick fix but who knows so let's get to it you can see so luckily i didn't have to unhook anything from this because that's a lot of wires to keep up with but our master cylinder is down there and now we got to figure out why in the world it's sticking because it's a single master cylinder that has a triple line on top of it so really unique and we have the uh, brake light wire hooked up as well so we can add brake lights to this eventually so i'm going to mess around with this see what the deal is there's no water in the reservoir i don't know if you can see that the fluid looks a little dingy but we can top it off and see what the problem is so i tilted this buggy over on its side this frame's built pretty well it's just uglier than sin uh, the way they built this and i could have made that swing arm longer which uh i think i'm going to end up doing all i'm going to do is build the chassis back so this swing arm stays exactly like it is and i'm going to stick the tires out a little bit past probably extend it like eight inches and then I can build a bigger bed area because that bed area is almost useless and do a different style roll cage it's, that's uh, nice on this thing. But you can see, uh, sorry, I got this little Milwaukee fan blowing the gas beams out the door. Um, that little engine setup is working awesome. That gearbox shifts flawlessly better than 150s. I highly recommend those Go Power Sports gearboxes, especially coupled with the electric start Tilson. It's real nice. So uh, the problem is, what I found out that I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's a mechanism. There's an arrow on screen pointing at it. Let me get my flashlight. We might be able to see it. So that little rusty hole there is where a bolt goes in to hold the brake pedal mechanism on that steel shaft. So basically what happened was water trickled down the chassis somehow. And uh, cause this thing was tarped quite a bit and then it's been in the rain for the last month, but everything's pretty, you know, pretty clean on this thing. Water must have penetrated in between 
the shaft that that pedal pivots on. So I've got PB Blaster soaking in it. Uh, we're going to soak it throughout the day and see if it frees it up because I know it's not the master cylinder because if you push the master, if you push the brake pedal down, the brakes lock. But if you pull it back up, the brakes are free. So that means the master cylinder is moving like it should. It's just literally that pedal mechanism just doesn't have a grease alamite or anything. So it's locking up. So I'm going to leave it sitting on its side like this so I can keep applying PB Blaster throughout the day, see if it frees up. And then once we get it free, we'll let him rip on it. A few moments later. So it was seized up. I had to actually heat it up and everything to get it freed. So now we have it greased up really good and oiled up and I can put the front end back on. I don't think there's anything else other than maybe tighten up the chain tension because that chain stretched a little bit that needs to be done on this. I do need to order an extra belt because this has the long style CVT 30 series belt. And we did take off the juggernaut because for one, he doesn't need a juggernaut and for two it would have hit that shock up there it's super close to the front pulley so we're going to clean this up check the oil and uh he'll be good to go to go rip snort on it again which is pretty exciting Okay, so that last segment was filmed months ago and I actually forgot I filmed it. But we, Grayson has been riding it, the brakes have been working great. We just make sure to oil them or re-grease that brake mechanism once maybe a, <clears throat> once a month or so. But it's time for a tune-up and you can see his CVT belt is really sitting low in that pulley and there's a ton of belt slop. I don't know if you guys can see that. But this belt has definitely stretched out. Now Grayson does do, like he stalls this thing up to do burnouts in the gravel, which stretches these belts. Now if you do a reverse gearbox like this, I highly recommend getting the uh, 203597 belt. I think this is a Murray belt. It's a 30 series, a lot longer belt from Go Power Sports. This is uh, the best belt to use with this because you can get the right placement. Uh, from the gearbox you can see the gearbox is almost touching the valve cover it actually is touching the valve cover just by a little bit that's the only way to really fit this thing in there i noticed one thing is his chain or his sprocket turns like a quarter of a turn before grabbing so i wonder if his key is almost broke all the way through we've had keys separate like that now uh, we use a little bit better quality key uh, another thing is we can start it but it'll only run on choke so we're gonna have to pull this carburetor and let me grab the flashlight. You can see it's got some buildup on it from fuel leakage and junk like that. So let's get the car pulled off. We'll get the collars pulled off of the sprocket and then we'll also switch out that belt. This belt is so, now I'm not gonna throw this belt away, but she is seen her better days. So this belt is still in good shape. Well, 60-40, you can tell it's been stretched. And like I said, Grayson stalls it up and that's probably what's stretching this. Cause when he, well, he don't realize when he's holding the brake to stall it up, it's just putting this CVT under a ton of stress. And uh, you can look at and see like it's starting to come apart. So we'll keep this as a spare, just like if all else fails, this will be the belt we use. But uh, this is about the time I like to change them. You can see how much uh, wear is on this corner. So this belt was definitely like this, you know, most people wear them out until they break and we normally do the same, but I don't want to work on this thing again. Let's compare the two belts. You can see how aggressive this is the old one and how the new one's got quite a bit more thickness to it, which this is the original belt we put on it when we built it. So it's actually been running extremely well. Like I'm pretty pleased with the amount of use that he's gotten out of a belt on this. Oh yeah. That's way better. So that's gonna make a performance difference for him, for sure. Oh yeah. 
I did not think that was going to come loose. So what we're going to do now is pop the chain off because that is a ton of movement. I've never seen a key on a small block wear out that much. He's been riding her hard, boo. Look at how that thing has started to cut itself in half. So needless to say, old Grayson ain't easy on these puppies. So we're gonna cut a fresh axle key. This one was, I had ran out and gotten some from like Rule King and they're way crappier quality. Go Power Sports is carrying some pretty good ones now. Uh, sometimes you do have to take off a little bit of the thickness, just a small amount to get a slot in there, but pretty crazy he was cutting that axle key in half so we got the axle key replaced i showed you guys he was almost cutting it in half uh that boy knows how to ride him which that surprises me that he was cutting that thing in half i've done it on v twins but never on a 212 so kudos to grayson for driving it like he stole it and like i said that belt stretched so much because he does his version of a burnout which is burning the crap out of the belt and then launching it in the gravel. Now I'm lubing the chain because this chain's still in good shape. It does need tighten a little bit, but it'll be all right. And I'm using blaster chain and cable lube. We keep this stuff on us all the time. When we go to meetups, we take it. And we'll be handing some of this stuff out there too. So make sure you come. I'm oversaturating it because it's pretty dry. So now I put this uh, little drain plug. You can get these in our Amazon links and I have it mounted down so it don't shake around and we can drain the oil. The only downside is they take a metric freaking year to drain these things. But I'm gonna drain this and then we'll pull the carb and clean it. And we need to either address it battery or get a new one. It's probably time for a new one. It needs to have a trickle charger put on it when he's not using it. All right, use two half inch. Ranches. Oh, that was very tight. And it does take forever. As you can see it just dribble dribbles. This oil had seven hours on it, and that's what it looks like. So when I say oil, these only take a half quart, so one quart will do two oil changes. I always say to just to go ahead and change it as often as possible because of this reason and you know this is going to take forever to drain just because these drain hoses that's the only downside to them they're so small i mean that's like a quarter inch hole in there so it takes forever i'm going to jack up the front of this and uh to help get it up off the, the front higher than the rear so once we got that front end up it's draining pretty quick and the oil doesn't look like awful it smells a little bit like gas but it was definitely time but what I love about this go-kart is it has this access panel right here and you can see the front of the engine and you can put oil in it really easy. You can get to the starter. There's the oil catch cam, which we need to drain it. We're almost done draining. Once we got it lifted up in the front and got the oil drain plug out, it started draining pretty quick. So uh, we'll get it filled up with the oil and then address that carburetor. So this is a Go Power Sports choke. Uh, we have them linked down below and you can convert a Makuni 24 millimeter to a dashboard style choke. So Grayson's able to jump in this thing, choke it and start it from the driver's seat. And that is that was a big deal for me because he does have his pull start right here and you can reach right in here and grab it. But it's really handy him having a choke on board. So I highly recommend checking those out. We'll do a video soon on how to hook up the Go Power Sports choke to a Makuni because you do have to buy a little part, but this carburetor is dirty. We should have been, I really like foam filters to be honest on these things, but we didn't have one at the time. So we just used what we had. It is what it is. We got gas dripping on our brake. 
and that should stop drooping in just a second. There was some gunk in that carburetor, if you can see it floating around. Definitely was time. We parked it with an empty tank of fuel, but uh, of course, there was a little bit in the bowl. So now, what I'm gonna do is pull these hoses off. Float out, we just shake that little pin out there. We pull this pin. Lay it aside and we can lift the floats out. You can see there's some dirt and gunk on those as well. Now there's our, there is our needle. And it's actually really good shape. The tip of it isn't got like a groove worn in it. That's the biggest thing to look for. And then what I'm gonna do is pull the pilot uh, jet, which is right here, that's your idle circuit. And then the main jet, make sure everything's cleaned out. I can see there's crust in the main jet. It's not blocked, but it is, you know, crusty. So all I do to check my jets is of course, hold them up to the light. See if you can see through, uh, see through the jet. And this one is the pilot. This is what, you know, controls your idle circuit. And it is completely clogged in the center bore like the board that goes all the way through it. The side ones are pretty decent. So I'm gonna clean these out with brake cleaner and make sure to get all the brake cleaner off of them, like let it dry, because brake cleaner can cause gaskets and stuff to harden. And then we'll just clean this thing really well with a toothbrush. I don't need to run it through the ultrasonic cleaner. It's not that dirty. Uh, the bowl was just got some gunk. We'll clean it up with a toothbrush and clean the outsides of this up. And these cookie sheets from the dollar store is the best thing to do carbs on. So freaking handy to not get gas everywhere. A few moments later. Mother of pearl, that's hot. So I changed my mind and I did run it through the ultrasonic cleaner, but before I always put it in there, I take an old toothbrush, buy these in the dollar store, and give it a real good cleaning to get the bulk of the stuff off of it. So this thing came clean like new, but before I put it back together, I did pull the, the um, idle air air fuel mixture screw for the idle circuit out i uh, did pull the uh, little thumb screw for the slide adjustment for setting your idle as well made sure to pull it mostly this wasn't a horrible carb if it was uh, a lot worse than this and i'd have pulled out every little thing i could but this is pretty good now i'll blow brake cleaner through it everywhere and then make sure i let that brake cleaner dry for a few minutes and that just gives us soap off of it too this soap will i use dawn um whatever's on screen that's what i use but i put a little bit of it in the water and uh it works really well so now i'll fish everything out and we can start cleaning this the rest of the way like getting the soap off of it and get it put back together and make sure make sure when you take your um idle air screw out to count like count how many turns in it is this one was two which is around the perfect adjustment and this thing ran great so we have it jetted uh perfect so i need to write down the jet size for main and pilot jet and how many turns out it was to keep on file because that's a good place to start on any 212 for us so we don't have to guess with jets all the time the thing comes super clean with just that was uh, eight minutes in the harbor freight ultrasonic cleaner you can see most of that stuff came out, but the little in the bowl is this little recessed area. I'm going to make sure to get all that out by scrubbing it with a toothbrush and brake cleaner.
so I did go ahead and replace this 15 because I had a bunch of them. I buy these in bulk uh, in all sizes. These are the exact same jets that the 34 millimeter takes. Um, you know, a lot larger, of course, but I'm going to clean this out with a set of uh, very small drill bits and put this back in the pack. I don't want to throw it away, but I just don't want to clean it right now. So I'll leave it right there for cleaning it later. But everything else came super clean. It looks like a brand new carburetor. Now I just need to clean the, uh, the choke that's on the buggy and the top hat, just so I don't get any dirt in here before we put this back on. Didn't have much blow by like oil in the catch can, which surprises me. Most of the time they do. So we got it all tuned up. Uh, I'm waiting on the air filter to actually dry because I did the K&N air filter cleaner on it and you gotta let it fully dry before we can put the oil on it. And then I just used Dawn dish soap and wash off the pre-filter. Now these pre-filters are awesome because if you hit water, they'll actually guard it from hitting the filter. But after a little while of riding, if you're riding in the water and the mud and stuff, you will have to remove this or it'll bog down your engine because it doesn't let air flow through once it gets wet to protect your filter. I always bring several of these, like two for each vehicle, and I bring an extra filter for each vehicle when we go to meetups because, and I go ahead and bring my cleaner kit because we ride so much that we have to clean these often. But I do wanna switch over to foam on all these. These are really good for asphalt racing and yard carts and stuff. But when you're off-roading and the silt dust uh, gets pretty rough so uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to fire this thing up real quick and see what it does i'm gonna take it off that jack up front and it is in neutral so it won't go anywhere all right she is choked guys thank you so much for watching this uh video today on us tuning up this go-kart she runs awesome uh i am going to put some amsoil stabilizer in that fuel just to help you know fight any kind of ethanol that could be left over in there because i did think it had non or uh the normal gasoline with ethanol in it but uh, make sure to check out the links in the video description for everything we used on this cart. They do help us continue to do these videos. And uh, this just shows you we have like 20 of these vehicles outside. And we have to do this maintenance to them several times a year. Uh, it's just so much work to keep these things running. But now Grayson will be able to rip and uh, enjoy it. We are going to be building a longer bed area, extending this swing arm and building double A arms on this later on in a new roll cage to make it look cool. Because right now, let's face it, she looks dinky. So uh, we'll film in the next couple of days, me and Grayson ripping around in the field and playing around and acting like a couple of kids. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know what you think about these style videos. Uh, we have to do them, so I figured I'd film it. So thank you guys, and we love you, and God bless.